Howard E. Wasden was born November 8, 1961 and was raised in Screven, Georgia and enrolled at Cumberland College for several years before enlisting with the Navy where he served as a search and rescue swimmer and an anti-submarine warfare operator. Wasden re-enlisted in order to get the necessary steps to, and completed the necessary steps to become a Navy SEAL. Later, he was selected to join the United States Naval Special Warfare Development Group, also known as SEAL Team 6, which is classified as a Tier 1 Special Mission Unit within the U.S. military's Joint Special Operations Command. Following his honorable discharge, he co-wrote the autobiography, I can't even pronounce that, sorry, Memoir, SEAL Team 6, Memoirs of an Elite Navy SEAL Sniper. He also graduated from Life University in Marietta, Georgia, and earned a Doctor of Chiropractic degree. Brandon Webb was born in Canada in 1974, was raised mostly in California, and worked on a fishing boat from the age of 16. He joined the Navy in 1993 and began his career as an aviation warfare system, systems operator and search and rescue swimmer. He completed basic underwater demolition SEAL training, or BUDS. He was assigned to SEAL Team 3. He served combat deployments to Southwest Asia, including Iraq and Afghanistan. He served as a Navy, SNIL, a Navy SEAL sniper course manager, where he developed new curricula and trained snipers. He is the editor-in-chief of, in, in of SOFREP, a media com, and a media uh, commentator on snipers and related special operations forces military issues. Webb is the co-author of the 21st Century Sniper, a complete practical guide, and his memoir, The Red Circle. Let's give them a round of, a, a round of applause, please. I'd like to turn the time over to Howard Wasden now for a presentation. Good afternoon. Glad to see everybody. Can everybody in the back hear me? Technical guy, can you hear me now? Oh, there we go. We good? All right. I'll keep this thing up here where I can talk right into it. I want to um, cover a little cross section. Um, there's a lot of myths out there about seals and um, you know, kind of people we are, what planet we come from, and all that kind of stuff. So um, I want to give you a cross section of a, of a typical seal, me, and what it means to be raised in our country and the benefits we have. But before I do that, I want anybody who's ever served in the military or who is currently serving to please stand up. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank, thank you all for your service. And just so you know, um, Navy SEALs are like on the hot button, we're the hot topic issue right now, chicks dig it and all that stuff. But <laughs> the guys you saw stand up are um, just every bit important as the job we do. We all have a mission to fulfill and without those guys, none of it gets done. The love of America and the land of opportunity. There's, a, there's something happening in our country right now that I don't quite understand, or something that has happened in our country, and we've gotten away from not only loving our country, but loving each other. So I'm gonna talk to you about some of the success I've had recently, then I'm gonna go back and show you where I came from, and it, and it might surprise you. My first book there, SEAL Team Six, I was real fortuitous with the timing. Um, they killed Osama bin Laden, and four days later my book came out. <laughs> And before anybody asked me, no, it wasn't a conspiracy. They didn't call me up and say, hey, Howard, hurry up. We're getting ready to cap him or anything like that. <laughs> Although I was accused of that. I, I had, it was just fortuitous, good timing. And um, the second book you see there, I'm a SEAL Team 6 warrior, was the youth adapted book. I'm more proud of this book than almost anything I've done in my life. I um, have uh, 200,000 kids that have read this book, and this is for the kids who don't like to read. And the letters I've gotten from this showed me that, you know, there might have been a reason I was spared on October 3rd during the Battle of Mogadishu. So that's pretty good. That's nice, successful stuff. The SEAL Team 6 Outcast book you see uh, came out last summer, did real well. And you guys are the first people to see it and the first television people to see it. Easy Day for the Dead will be out in October. So, you know, riding pretty high right now. Before that, I had some military success. I got the Silver Star, the Purple Heart, Navy Commendation Medal. And does anybody here know why they give you these like really nice medals? Yeah, because they don't want to give you a raise, you know? <laughs> the Silver Star is like one of the neatest medals ever created and that and 50 Cent will get you a cup of coffee, you know? Uh, the Purple Heart, I got mixed feelings about that, you know? I basically look at that as a Navy marksmanship medal, you know? I got shot three times and I get a Purple Heart. You know, what does he get, you know? So that's what the um, military does for you, and that was my success. But just so you know, before success, th this is how I grew up. 
I was raised or I was born to a 15 year old mother. I was born two months premature. I was a preemie and almost died because the surfactant around my lungs hadn't developed completely. Okay. So after that, I was adopted, um, moved to a small town in Georgia and abused. I mean, daily. Um, not like beat with a fist or anything, but beat with a belt regular. And after that, I decided to run away from home. So, and I did, I ran to these people's house, uh, got off the bus, went down the street and just basically said, hey, I'm here to live with you. You got anything to eat? <laughs> so I was pretty desperate, but this was all before success. So if I'd have said right now, if I'd have copped out and said, hey, I'm gonna depend on the United States government, uh, some social program or something to help me because, wah, I had a tough life, you know? Somebody help me. You know, I could have turned out like Jeffrey Dahmer, you know, given that background. This is the house that I grew up in. This is a good picture of the house. The house that I grew up in back then had a sag in the middle right there, a little room off to the side that had three windows in it that I stayed in because I was the adopted bastard child and the children who belonged to the man that adopted me lived in the house and they had heat. The door was closed going to my room. There was no heat out there. You could look down going from the house to my room and see dirt below it. So I have a hard time with the kids today who have these horror stories about how bad they've got it. My parent won't give me an iPhone. You poor thing, you ought to call defects and get the, you taken away from them. <laughs> but like uh, I told you, success can end abruptly. I went, um, and I say this in my book, and I, I say it all the time, I went from rock star to rock bottom. I felt pretty good about myself as a member of SEAL Team 6. You've all seen Black Hawk Down, uh, the Battle of Mogadishu. That was the only bad day I ever had and I was shot three times. I went from tactical um, God, which I thought I was, and I'd really gotten to a point where I thought I was more than human. And I'm not sitting here telling you that bragging about it. It was, it was kind of like a wake up call for me. So God has a way of getting your attention when he wants to do it. And unfortunately to get my attention, I had to suck up three AK-47 bullets and he did get my attention. The crazy thing about my thought process when I was being shot was, I can't believe this is happening to me. This happens to other people. Oh my God, I'm being shot. So after I was shot there three times, we kind of like get out of the Humvee, we're sitting in a ditch there, and you can see them coming in on you. We're out of ammunition, and you hear people talk about seeing a white light, and you know, they're floating out of their body, looking down, and seeing their body on the ground. Everything goes in slow motion. I didn't have any of those things happen to me. I don't know if that meant I was going to hell, but I didn't see a sign for it. <laughs> You know, I didn't see a pitchfork or anything, but the one, the one regret that I did have while I was laying in that ditch, though, was that I didn't tell the people in my life I loved them enough. And that was the way I was raised. I was raised by an armed fist. You're a weak man to tell someone you love them. You're a weak man to ask for help. And I later found out the hard way that that's not, uh, that's not true. You got to be a real man to tell the people you love them uh, that you love. So I kind of made God a promise. I think I was kind of bargaining with him at that time. I'm like, hey, you know, if you get me out of this one, I'll make sure to tell the people I love that I love them. My daughter Rachel sitting here on the front row when I came back from uh, Somalia. I was in a dark place. Um, she and I didn't really have a relationship for about four years. Um, I was wounded, divorced, climbed into a Jim Beam bottle and lived there for about three years. And just because it made me numb. So. But she can tell you now, I never give up or miss the opportunity to tell the people I love that I love them because you never know what's going to be the last time. So if I died tomorrow, I know that, hey, I was given a second chance and I was able to, to fulfill that. Through all that, what brings me to my main point today, though, is we are the best nation in the world at taking people and turning them into soldiers. We're the worst nation in the world and taking soldiers and reassimilating them back into society. We have, you'd, you'd be amazed at the number of PTSD letters I get. So every once in a while, my clinic server will crash from these things. So much so that we're having to set up a new website because people are coming back and thank God they're asking for help. And I think part of that reason is that we've made it okay now to ask for help. You know, if somebody who's a badass Navy SEAL sniper can say, hey, it's okay, I need help, then obviously it must be okay. It doesn't make you a wimp, it just means you need help. And we live in the best country with our liberty, rights, and opportunities. It makes me so mad when I hear these young people today, or even um, adults today say, you know, uh, well, if we had it like, and they'd use a country for an example, or if we had it like this country, if we would do it like this, it's like, do you realize that everything in this country that we have is God-given? Not one person sitting in this room, me included, deserved to be born into America. By the grace of God, 
we were born into the greatest country in the world, and you ought to clap about that. <laughs> because we are blessed as Americans. <laughs>